kind of torn about this one. Forgive me if I've got it wrong. This is Wretched Radio. Perhaps you know, perhaps you don't know, hence my conundrum. The story of a magnificent preacher who recently fell, admitting to two adulterous relationships, disqualifying himself, nobody else, he disqualified himself from ministry, preaching, being a leader, all gone. And he was magnificent. And you're going to get a taste of that because he just, and I mean within the last few days, just published an open letter of confession to you. If you know who who this fellow is, if you don't, I'm not going to share the name. And I know that can be a little bit annoying because it's like, why not? Because I don't know that this story yet is widely disseminated enough for us to just be talking about it as opposed to propagating more to more people knowing about it being hurt by it wounded by it so i'm sorry if i've got that wrong and i'm not mentioning his name freely it's 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 not because i know the fellow i considered him a friend still do by the way we've we've been emailing just a bit and we'll continue to do so he's not the antichrist He's just disqualified from pastoral ministry, and it was a massive gaffe. So if you know who I'm talking about, you're going to know who this is, and you are going to be, I think, you're going to hear something theologically sound and correct when somebody sins. And then I think you're going to be reminded how magnificent of a communicator this man was. If you don't know, I'd encourage you to not go looking, because all it'll do is grieve you and break your heart. He writes, it is with great disappointment, my dear friends, that I must express this confession to you in a manner that, for me, has always seemed so distant and detached. I would have preferred a much more personal and direct means of communication, sitting in a coffee shop or at a kitchen table. Unfortunately, however, given the number of people to whom I must acknowledge my failure, as well as to the vast distances that separate us, I ask you to graciously recognize this as my best effort to reach as many of you as possible. Can I just tell you how well written that is if you didn't catch it from hearing it? July 27, 2018, to my wife and family members, the elders and congregation of this church, the faculty of the seminary where he taught and friends and colleagues both near and abroad someone very wise once said pastors must be the chief repenters in a congregation of repenters it is important that this proves to be the case now not because I haven't yet repented but because my sin is of such a nature that I need to express my repentance to you Several years ago, I strayed from my wedding vows. Was it probably a decade ago? Breaking the covenantal bond I made to my dear wife 36 years ago. More recently, I again violated my marriage commitment. In both instances, I engaged in adulterous relationships that were nothing less than acts of defiance to the will of my God and Father as well as expressions of profound ingratitude for the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ that I prize so dearly. I confess this sin and take full responsibility for it. There are no justifications, excuses, or rationalizations for my behavior. I, in acts of idolatry, not adultery, idolatry, choose, chose sin over God. I am profoundly ashamed at the enormity of my rebellion as well as the hypocrisy of exercising ministry while cloaking my sin in the shadows can you just hear this guy preaching I am broken for the magnitude of my offenses to God the devastation I have inflicted upon my wife the grief brought to bear upon my children and the disappointment that I have produced among the people with whom I have been privileged to share ministry Though it is entirely undeserved, I humbly ask you to forgive me for my betrayal of your trust and friendship. Period. Done. That quickly. <laughs> That's the way we're supposed to be. Uh, I just heard a story this morning from Al. He was talking about Dolly Madison. Dolly Madison. The cake oh, unbelievable baked oh. goods. 
You eat one of the, you eat one of her ding dongs or whatever they are. You can die. Goes, they will exhume you in a century, and you'll be whole. There's that many preservatives in a Dolly Madison treat. Or it could preserve you for a century. Somebody, Saying. somebody couldn't figure out why she was being so kind to the people that had harmed her, and she said, "I distinctly remember forgetting that." That's what it, this is just an act. This is just a sheer act of the will. I have been forgiven so much more than what this pastor in his disgrace has done to me. Uh, how can I not? As soon as he said, I ask for your forgiveness, done. Now here's where it gets tricky in your home. You don't think they really mean it. Doesn't matter. That's between them and God. If it's offered, we grant it, period. Discuss that, by the way, in conflict with Dr. John Street, available at wretched.org. Back to the confession letter from the high-profile pa profile pastor who took a header. With each passing day, the fresh awareness of this betrayal breaks my heart in greater and deeper ways. I've also heard that from another friend of mine who fell in the ministry. I'm inclined to want to speculate as to why this could have happened. What was the chink in the armor? I'm still working through that. I think I'm, I might at least have a little bit of a glimmer of insight, I think, but I don't want to speak definitively. It wouldn't be fair yet. So this leaves me with nothing but a hope in the accomplishments of the cross to which I desperately cling. This is a repentant man you're hearing from. Is he a Christian? Well. If he wasn't before the fall, it sounds like he is now. And so we take this confession and we go, let's move forward. Disqualified from ministry, but certainly welcome in any church. Despite the profound grief and shame, I'm deeply thankful to my Heavenly Father for graciously exposing this sin and forcing me to turn from it. The promise that he chastises those he loves so that his children might share in his holiness gives me hope and comfort. My present and painful circumstances have become to both my wife and me the gracious verification of God's fatherhood and my spiritual paternity. Because of my sin, I've disqualified myself from the office of elder. Furthermore, I have no desire to per pursue ministry of any kind. My focus is entirely directed at making right the very thing I have ignored for far too long, the well-being of our marriage. Sir, learn from this man. If you're neglecting your marriage, stop it now. You could become the next guy that we talk about. Don't. This long-term process has already begun. I'll move forward. This reprioritized commitment will require us to relocate. Now, this is, this is important because I'm of the opinion that a pastor even who falls or somebody who sins in the church, they stay in the church. No reason not to. You're just not the pastor anymore. You're just a sheep. You went astray. You're back in the fold. It's all good. You just don't get to preach or teach anymore. That's all. Nevertheless, he explains why, as a response to my wife's desires and needs and to make ourselves available to care fully for my wife's elderly parents. Consequently, she and I now resign our membership at our church, freeing the elders to give their entire attention to carefully shepherding the congregation through this season of challenge. Likewise, we're choosing to relinquish the remaining balance of the severance package so kindly extended to us by the elders so as to free the church from the burden of caring for our financial responsibilities. I am certain that my sin has brought waves of divergent emotions in many of you. He's right. Hurt, confusion, sorrow, anger, all of these are appropriate responses to my failures that your Heavenly Father understands. Not if they're sinful, of course. Moment by moment, I feel the heavy weight of inflicting them upon you. If, however, I may appeal to your mercy in Jesus Christ, dear friends, allow me to ask four things of you. Direct your anger at me, not at my family. Please pray for the elders of the church. Pray for the congregation. Never doubt the gospel of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. By the way, he includes a note. His wife continues to display the likeness of her heavenly father in real and palpable expressions that overwhelm me with tearful humility and contrition. 
Though I have failed her egregiously, I love her deeply. With God's help, our family will survive this season and eventually thrive for God's glory. I love you, albeit with a love that has been marred by great failure, and I do plead for your forgiveness. I have failed you profoundly, but the gospel of Jesus Christ will never fail you. The fact is, its greatest glory proves most obvious in the context of sin and failure. In this case, my own great sin and failure. We, in our brokenness and humiliation, now need your prayers. God bless you. I don't think it gets much better than that. We will be praying for this family, church, and elders, I'm sure. This is Wretched Radio.